Three, two, one. Oh, yes. Good morning. Uh, it's a quarter afternoon right now because it's noon. If you listen to this later, if we upload later, good evening. This is This Week in Sports. I'm Josh Jackal. That's Caleb. He's my brother. He's the producer. And um, I was just looking at uh, something, and it made me re- remember a time in my life where I was stuck at the Edmonton International Airport for 11 hours, two years ago, on my way to uh, Toronto, or not Toronto, where am I going? I'm going to Vancouver two years ago to go to Seattle to watch the Jays play. Um, I booked a flight through, should I say the name of the airline? Bogus Ass Hurt Ass Airline? No. No? Okay. Bogus Ass, one of those cheap airlines, and um, the flight was for like 11 o'clock or something. Right after just afternoon, you might have dropped me off there. I'm not sure. And um, okay, it's delayed as soon as I get there. I'm okay, yeah. Delays happen, right? Go to the bar, delayed by like three hours. I'm like, what the heck? So I'm sitting at the bar in the airport, and this is like right after weed just got legalized. I rolled a joint right at the right at the airport bar. No one even gave a shit, and. The bartender was so cool that they let me leave my bags at the airport bar, go smoke a joint. So when I came back through security, it was just me, no bags, nothing. So it was nice and easy. It was sick. But what wasn't sick was the fact that it was delayed like three hours. And then when I come back in, another delay, like five hours. I go talk to the stewardess waiting at the front there. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? They're like, oh, the plane needs a part. The plane's broken. We're trying to fix it. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're going to uh, part flown in. Okay, what the fuck? Like five hour, five hour delay. I'm just pissed, right? It's like now it's like five, four or five o'clock. We'll roll, <laughs> roll another joint, smoke another joint. Six, seven hours, and we get another delay. I go to the go go up to the, the gate. I'm like, what the heck is happening? They're they're like, uh, the part's not coming in. We got to get another plane from Toronto. We get a whole new plane. So long story short, I was at I was at the Edmonton International for like twelve hours. For a flight to, to Vancouver, for a three-hour flight, not even a three-hour flight, yeah, like less than three-hour flight, and we could have drove, could have drove to Vancouver in that delayed time, and all I got for my fucking worries was a, a meal voucher, and that was actually right before the, uh, the Canadian law changed, for uh, like what they had to give delayed passengers, because right after that the law changed, and now they had to like give more compensation than just a fucking meal voucher, but uh, yeah, that trip. Was uh, was based around the Blue Jays as well. Actually, going to Seattle to watch them, and that was a crazy time. I'm not sure if I told the story on this on this podcast on previous episodes, but um, I got kicked out for yelling "water" at one of the players. Um, it's a hilarious, hilarious story. I don't know if I should get into it today because, fuck, it's so funny. Uh, I'll I'll give the summary of it. It was Players Weekend, so the players had nicknames on their jerseys, and the right fielder. For the Mariners, his nickname was Water, and I was sitting first row, right field, right behind him, and I let him hear it for like two hours straight. Water! Like, every like five seconds. So much so that he had to have complained or something to complain because security came down at like the seventh inning um, with the cop. Or no, they, they tried to escort me out. Then the cops come. They, they kind of escort me out. I get kicked out. But the whole reason I was at this game was, or the whole reason I was... This whole trip happened to Vancouver and Seattle was for the Jays. So I was like, fuck this. And I snuck back in. Um, and that's a good teaser. I'll, I'll tell that story maybe on another, maybe on the next podcast, the next episode, because holy fuck, it was hilarious. And then I go back down to that same section, water. And everyone look, looks at me like, holy fuck, this guy got back in somehow after they seen me get kicked out. Um, but yeah, that was my trip to Vancouver began two years ago for that um two years ago to this date so next episode i'll tell the whole story because that would be like exactly two years after um i got kicked out but that kind of segues me into the last trip the jays did to seattle um we just completely shit the bed because last time i checked in on this year this week in sports just came back from toronto we had a crazy winning streak we had a crazy homestand it was nine and two we great record on our first uh, our first games back in Canada and then we go on the road we go to Seattle we only win one game there we go to Boston we only won one game there 
and uh, we dropped a few games, and now there's only 43 games left, 42 games left in the season, and we're four and a half back of a wild card position, so we got to go on a tear, and so I figured we're at 63 wins, usually you need about 90-ish to make the playoffs, and so we would have to win 27 of our last 42, 27, 28, to be in the conversation of the playoffs. So we got to, we got to, we're running out of runway and it's possible, but we have to like go on a tear right away here or else, you know, it's, we're just going to run out of time. So go Jays. We're playing right. Uh, we're playing in like half an hour against the Detroit Tigers game two. Um, we lost yesterday, uh, which was quite disappointing. Um, so we got to, we just got to string some wins together, like several wins together. We got to, we got to get on our horse. And it sucks that uh, George Springer, Mr. $150, $150 million man, is injured again. And he was he was getting back into form because he, he was injured for like 60 games at the beginning of the season. Came back. Took him a little while to um, get this, get back into the, the swing of things. And when once he did, he was on a tear. And then he got freaking injured with like a sprained left knee or something. So he's on the 10-day injured list, and we're hoping, really, really hoping that it comes back soon because we definitely, definitely need him, um, especially after that road trip. And so the other guys have to pick it up because, yeah, we're, we're running, out of, running out of real estate here. So go Jays. In other news, oh, your boy, the king, Henrik Lungfist. Of the New York Rangers, what's going on here? Of the New York Rangers, calls it a career after 15 seasons. What a legend! What a legend! I was looking at this guy's stats earlier. He he finished with uh, almost 900 games played, 459 career wins, uh, career goals against of 243, and a save percentage of 918. One of the best who ever played. He was drafted in 2007th round. 205th overall. And he carved out a... Would probably, it's probably going to be a Hall of Fame career. I heard uh, the New York Rangers are retiring his number this season. And well-deserved. He was one of my favorite goalies, Henrik Lugvist. Uh Congrats on an amazing career. And um, there won't be another one for the Rangers for quite some time. Quite like Hend- the King Hendrik Lungfist. I think we're 55 days or so from puck drop, opening game to the NHL season for for our oil. You can catch me at the first game for show. Um, I think, no, no, the first game I think is in Vancouver. And then... Yeah, the first game at home, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be working so much that I'm basically, I'm going to be able to go to every game, Caleb. Like in October. And I'm going to. And I'm going to be, I'm going to try to like see if my uh, my buddy Cam Moon, the Oilers play-by-play guy, can maybe get me in, on the, in the booth one of these, one of the uh, games, sneak me in there for a second, you know? Because uh, that'd be sick. Kind of get, 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 get like a behind-the-scenes uh, view of how the broadcast is done. All right, that'd be really cool. Um, so see if I can. Swing. I, I'm gonna get Cam Moon on this podcast though. He's gonna be one of the guests. Um, coming up, the Oilers play by play. I'm gonna try to see if uh, he's available in the coming weeks before the season starts, before spring train, uh, before spring training, before training camp starts. Uh, because he's gonna be super busy. I can imagine during the during the season. So. Before the season starts, kind of want to get his take on if he thinks the the Oilers are better this year with the additions we made in the off season. I think I think we are a little bit better. We're a little, we're definitely deeper, and we're definitely not worse. We didn't we didn't uh, lose any big pieces. We signed Nuge. We got Smitty back, and if Smitty, old man Smith, can fucking string together some 
a, a season like he did last year, then we'll, I think we'll be in good shape. It's just a matter of getting getting over that hump in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, fucking NHL 22 is coming out soon. And they unveiled the uh, cover athlete. And it's it's the grease monkey athlete. Austin Matthews again. He was on NHL 20 cover. And now he's right. on... Yeah, now he's on NHL 22. Why would they do that? I don't know, man. Like, they can't even get past the first round. These fucking Leafs. I don't... Like, it's so weird that they would, yeah, make Austin Matthews cover boy again, second time in three years. Like, it's so fucking strange. I don't get it. Like, sure, like, in 21, Alex Ovechkin graced the cover, but he and he was in 06, so that was the second time, but that's 15 years apart. I thought they had. I thought it was like the winning team got the. Well, it should be a Tampa Bay Lightning. They yeah. they won two cups in a row. And they haven't had a guy on the front. They, well, not since uh, Stamkos. Like they should have either their goalie Vasilevsky, which is a legend. Like he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And or uh, <laughs> I suggested Pat Maroon because he's he's a three time champion, three times in a row. He's won the cup three years in a row. Patrick Maroon, once with uh, St. Louis, and then the last two with fucking Tampa. I can't I, like I think the last per- the last uh, player to win three cups in a row was like oh when was that when could have that been like that maybe maybe an Oiler or a New York Islander during the, their dynasties I just don't understand why they have the same guy they just had on I don't get it man I don't fucking understand it either man that makes, like, yeah, it makes no sense. It makes no me. sense whatsoever. Like, sure, okay, Toronto is a big hockey market, and a lot of got, people are going to buy their games, but people are going to buy the game anyways in yeah, Toronto. Yeah, and I'm looking at this NHL 20 cover. It's not even a nice cover. No, it's fucking retarded, like all pink and shit, and like his stupid little smile. Um, And now, yeah, he's... He's, he's not even doing anything in the, in the... I know, he's just walking back to the dressing room after getting swept in the first round. <laughs> No, that was the others that got swept, but they, they still haven't uh, won around Toronto, so you can SM, SMD. I feel like they should just do alternate covers. You should, like... Uh, based on where you are. Well, no, not so much that, but like you can get like different editions. Like NBA does it, MLB does it, where you can get different editions. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Or get even like, like an Eastern Conference and a Western Conference. Would that work, you think? It could, but I, I don't think they... There's no need for that because people are going to buy the game either way. But with the way ML, uh, NBA and MLB does it uh, pretty much every year, they have different tiers of game you can buy, right? You can buy the basic version or you can buy like something with some additions on it, um, like a special edition. Then they can get like a limited edition, which is like super like you get a bunch of shit with it and it's got like a, a, a different cover as well. And I th- I, like NHL should get on that for fuck's sakes. If, <laughs> Like what, what? Who's it gonna be next year? Like, fucking Sid the Kid has only been on it once, I think, too, which is fucking ridiculous. Um, Connor, which is my favorite NHL eighteen, Connor was on the cover of that. But uh, yeah, never mind the Leafs. Screw the Leafs. Go Oilers. <laughs> no, but uh, and the NHL eighteen, I'm looking at the cover right now. That's a nice cover. Like, it's a sick. That's a sick cover. And that, like, I guess I'm biased, but like, well, no, but that's Selly. Like, he's yeah. doing something. Yeah, exactly. Cover. And so, so is 19. Nine, yeah, yeah, with the PK Subban. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like 19. 19 was good too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, it's so weird that they, it, it, it also kind of, it's ironic that they have the same, the same cover athlete in like two and three years because it's pretty much the same game they release every fucking year, man. For fuck's sakes, dude. They should just uh, they should just release like the same game. They should just release twenty. <laughs> well, they no do pretty it. much, man. It's yeah. fucking retarded. And actually, I was it's funny you bring that up, and I'm thinking about that now. I I, uh, I just bought MLB the Show twenty one. Uh, what was it yesterday or the day before? And I I kept thinking like, sure, this is better, like a little bit better. And in, in, in a few ways, it's better. It's a better game than um. I didn't play 20 because I boycotted it because <laughs> the fucking Astros scandal. I was, I was so done with it. But it's uh, I, I played 19 quite extensively and uh, the show 21, it improves a lot of things, but 
essentially it is the same game and they use a lot of the same models especially for like the stadiums uh talking mlb 21 the show specifically uh, a lot of the models for the stadiums are the same uh i just played a game in petco park in san francisco and <laughs> it's probably the worst animated water i've seen in like five years in any game right because they're, they're right along the bay right so you can see the water but it's like oh it's like it's like, yo, this is 21. Like, the fuck? Why does the water look like it's flat? I feel like when you look at what NBA is doing, like, it, it looks like real life now. Like, it's just unreal. I know we, that's a kind of cliche to say about graphics, but like... No, NBA uh, 21, 2K21 is one of the best looking games, period. Yeah. Um, sports, genre, never mind that. Just any game, period. And the thing about NBA, though, is like, you, you can... You can really concentrate on, on the graphics because it's it's all within one particular spot, like on the court in a, in an arena. But so is pretty much baseball. Like baseball, they could definitely improve on the stadium models and everything. But the reason why they haven't uh, excelled and like kept going in a quicker manner and a more urgent manner to like upgrade is because they have no competition uh playstation sony signed an exclusive deal with mlb back in like 2006 for like 15 years or some shit so they've been they've they've been the only baseball game really there's been like smaller competitors but not even close and now i heard that uh ea is going to be making or finally going to be back making uh baseball games for starting at 22 so now there's going to be competition, and competition breeds better games. For a long time, EA had NBA while 2K did as well. So there was some competition there, right? And that's the same thing happens for NHL, though, because in NHL, there's no competition now. Yeah. It's, it's just EA. That's so why they release the same game. MLB The Show is 2K? No. No, no. There's no 2K in MLB for, it hasn't been for a while. Who develops the show? Uh, San Diego Studios, I think it's called or something, mm. and it's like their own thing. They've had that's like the only game they really, really make, and they, it's they've had exclusive rights with uh, MLB for like over a decade. But now there's gonna be competition, so hopefully we we get some really, really good games for the next gen. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, the good thing about uh, MLB 21, if you have the next gen, is you can create your own stadium. But I don't have a next gen, and I just wanted to play it online, and. Like the player models, like it looks better on field, but just the graphics, like in the in the crowds and the stadiums, are like ah, you can tell like they haven't updated those in a few years. So hopefully they do in the coming years. Now that they have competition, I feel like build your own stadium was something that that you played like when we were kids. Yeah, that was EA's last game. They had build your own. They had create your own stadium. Uh, it was for MVP Baseball two thousand five, two thousand six, I believe with Manny Ramirez on the cover, and I played that extensively because it was so much fun. It was, to this day, it's one of the best baseball, best sports games ever played. If you if you like look at uh, people that like rate sports games and whatnot, MVP Baseball, 2000, I can't remember, so five or six, is, is the best, one of the best sports games ever made. It was so extensive. It was for original Xbox at that time, right? And whew, I played that for years and years. And yeah, you could like customize everything, like the price of your hot dogs, the price of your concession, um, price of your seats, and you like make addition to your stadium. Like the more years that would go by, you can like add decks and do construction on it. It's quite, it was an incredible game, and I loved it so much. And so I, I like that ML that the show brought it back for 15 years later, finally bring it back, and. If I somehow get my hands on a PS5, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna play that play that uh, extensively as well. I'm sure they're gonna have it for MLB 22 though, so that'll be fun. But yeah, that was my little review for MLB 21. The show. If you're a baseball fan, get it. There there are improvements. It is it is a it is a better game than 19 was at least, but not like in leaps and bounds because. They have no competition, so they can just, you know, do improve what they want and just, you know, keep keep getting you back for more and more every every year. You know, it's like a subscription service. These these 
sports games because you buy them every year. And at least I do. And I'm sure a lot of sports fans do as well. Hold on. My mic's getting a little further away from my bat face. Um, CFL. The Asks finally fucking won a game. We were 0-2 to start the season. We got smoked by Montreal like a couple weeks ago. 30-13. to <laughs> Just destroyed. And we finally won in uh, in Vancouver against the Lions. Beat them uh, 21-16 last week. I think we have... Or that was last night, what am I saying? Right? I don't even know. I, I stopped looking at, at, at the uh, scores for that because I was like, every time I look at these scores, we're losing. We're getting beat. But... Finally, we beat uh, BC on Thursday. It was. It wasn't yesterday. It was Thursday. That's why I was kind of confused. We got the Argos next week on Thursday. It's a weird day to play football. Uh, who watches Thursday games? And then the stamps for the Labor Day Classic in, in Calgary. And September 11th. Oh, I think, we'll be, I think I'll be in Banff that week. I'm not sure. Can't remember. If not, I would check out that game i have yet to check out a game I, didn't, I missed the first two games good thing i didn't go to game two because we got smoked and game one was kind of a heartbreaker we uh <laughs> like half a yard away from winning the game it was the last play of the game and we got stopped on the one yard line against the red blacks in the season opener we got the blue bombers after that september 18th i might have to actually go check out that one but go Elks, go Esks, whatever you want to call them. I still can't get used to uh, Elks. And any Eskimo gear you have, keep it, because that shit's like vintage now. That's what, my, that's what Adam was saying. As an Adam, he's got like a bunch of like Eskimo's gear. Like, shit, man, don't get rid of this. Like, keep this. It's so they don't make this shit anymore. And there was some, there was some other news here. That needed to be relayed. Oh yeah, <laughs> the sweepstakes. No one, no one inboxed me for shit, so I got a free fifty dollar card. Or if you want it, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our three listeners didn't write down our keywords, so I'll I'll take it. All right, all right. <laughs> Next one will be for a thousand bucks. Let's see if we get their their attention like that, eh? Thousand dollar gift card to West Ham in the mall for some keywords. Let's go like a hundred bucks. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, Joey Votto. Joey Votto. Canadian Joey Votto. Uh only the second Canadian to hit two thousand hits in the bigs. He did that uh, like a week ago. Congrats to him. Makes me proud to be Canadian. He just uh crushed his twenty eighth home run uh yesterday against the Marlins. So he's having a fucking great year. 2,000 hits, like, that's legendary shit. I think only, like, 500 players ever have been to 2,000 hits, and then 3,000 hits is like an exclusive club. Um, that actual... A player that we're playing against on the Detroit Tigers is close. He's Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera, he's got... Four, he's sitting on 499 home runs and 2,900-some hits. 2,956 hits, I believe. So, future Hall of Famer. That, like, first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, playing against us. Uh, by us, I mean the Jays today. Oh, no. I just seen the standings. We're, we're five and a half back. Oh. oh, my God. We play the Yankees one once more. Which is going to be huge. All right, we have, we'll have to take probably all... We'll have to win that series and then probably have to sweep them to even stand a chance. Oh, with 42 games left. Damn. Go Jays, go. I just, it's so, it's hard. It's hard. After such a good homestand and seeing them, seeing them win three games in a row, like live, and then seeing them go on a tear for the rest of that homestand and then go on the road and just like shit the bed. It's like, oh, guys, come on. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Please string, give me some hope. String some wins together, please. Oh, so game time is coming up here against Detroit. I'm gonna go buy a uh, Bichette jersey. Hopefully that'll turn our luck around. And 
uh, I was saying to, saying to Caleb here, last time we recorded, we were on a tear, so hopefully this recording will turn things around and we'll start winning. I'm not superstitious, though. Oh, my God. Just a little stitious. Just a little stitious. That was uh, another episode of This Week in Sports. Thanks for listening. I'm Josh Jacko. Hopefully the next episode will be, well, it will be in a couple days here. I uh, got, some, got some things to talk about, some stories to tell. That, uh, that water story for getting kicked out in, in uh, Seattle is one for the ages. Anyway, thanks for listening. Adios.